Welcome human geographers. We're going to talk about one of the three pillars of human geography. We talk about the main um, pillar as far as um, ethnicity and then language and religion stem off of those. Uh, we're going to talk about the geography and language in this chapter. So what is language? Mutually agreed upon symbolic communication. Some languages are used um, heavily, and some are more um, indigenous or tribal or very local, which you see in parts of South America and Africa, among other um, islands in the Pacific. Essentially mutual agreed upon language. Most languages really come from two families, which we'll get into. So we're going to talk about region now. Dialects or contrast or variant forms of dialects. An example of that is we see different types of um, use of language, for instance, slang um, in the United States, where we see the most typical um, language spoken in Michigan. And then we get into places like the Northeast or California or the South. We tend to see um, different forms of that spoke. About 7,000 languages and many more dialects exist. The pidgin language, where different linguistic groups come into contact, very small vocabulary derived from languages. Creole languages, native language with their speakers. Lingua franca, which is where you have a, um, a region or a realm, if you will, and essentially um, that realm speaks several different languages. A perfect example is um, what we have in Europe the common language that is spoke, although many languages are spoken, um, the common language in Europe is um, English, if you will. So we have language families. There's really two main language families and there's all kinds of families broken off. If you take in biology, the way things are classified, it's very similar with languages. Um, we have one of them is called Indo-European. Um, Indo-English, what we speak in the United States predominantly, is a German Indo-European language, and there's six Indo-European tongues, um, ten of the most spoken languages in the world. Okay, and then the other, here's the example of the language tree. The other major family besides Indo-European is Sino-Tibetan, second only to Indo-European in number of native speakers. Sino refers to referring to China, more than 1.3 billion people in China. Afro-Asiatic family, two major divisions, Semitic and Hamitic. Arabic is widespread in Semitic language. Um, Hebrew is another Semitic tongue. Polyglot, you have a mixture of different languages. Okay, Sign, Arab Quora, Nazareth, several different languages spoken there. A lot of that has to do with the being the Holy Land of multiple religions. Other ma major languages, Altec, Japanese and Korean, Austro-Asiatic, Austronesian, or Uralic, Niger, Congo. So mobility, we can see this moving around throughout the world. We have relocation, Antolio hypothesis, movement of Indo-European languages from the area around Turkey. Um, thought to be one of the original um, Formations of civilization. Kurgan spread in the European originated with the animal domestication in Central Asian steppes. I think both of those are true somewhat. Um, we talk about relocation diffusion. We can see uh, maps. We can use maps to see where that distribution is. Really good map showing the flow here. Um, we can see the origination of languages and where they spread. It goes back several thousand years. Migration and survival language really has to do with how um, close a um, practicing um, group of people are and how the language is retained. You have Arabic, Latin, survived by many around Roman Catholic Church and Vatican City. Many call it a dead language, though. Arabic spread around the Arabian Peninsula. Isoglass, Bori of a usage of individual word pronunciation shifts over time. We see that happening in the United States. Perfect example is um, what we call soda, coke. Uh, there's all kinds of names for that. Subcultures practice different names. 
different dialects spoken by different types of ethnicities it can be an eth ethnolect. Of globalization where most of it spread, a thousand of all languages has as many as 100,000 speakers, 500,000 speakers. Some experts believe three other languages will be extinct or dying by 2100. A lot of that has to do with the spread of technology being so massive. As we talked about in this slide. Writing language dominates transportation and diffusion. Um, we see this through different modes of transportation, not just through te technology, but physical transportation. Here we talked about the spreading through the internet, practices of language, how much we have. Um, texting, we see um, really three trends through the world that have been far outreaching. One is the television, the other one has been the internet, and then thirdly, this incredible um, mobility access, cell phones, um, wireless technology is being so even in some of the poorest areas of the world it's very very quick and easy to set up mobile networks where you have some of the poorest countries even in Africa doing banking on um, older technological phones habitat vocabulary different languages um, having to do with different adapt adaptive strategies um, we see different kinds of flows of languages, the same kind of origination. Toponyms, we see generic toponyms with place names and so forth. Um, here we essentially see a toponym shift where names are changed, can be for place names and so forth. And then we also see um, fluidity of language where different languages can be merged together in sp like Spanglish, for instance. Um, some kind of hybrids where different languages are spoken together. So anyway, I thought you'd find that's really interesting. I think it's one of the uh, more fun chapters and look forward to seeing you in the next chapter.